So I'll be making a video showing how to make Skelly Grow bottles inspired by Harry Potter. And first I'll show you, this is my original sculpt. Uh, it's damaged because I, I made a mold of it and wasn't ever able to repair it. So my original sculpt I made using a glass bottle. And I then used polymer clay. I used Super Sculpey. And I, I coated the bottle with clay and added all of my details. So this original one isn't actually, it is a glass bottle. So the inside is glass and I have a cork on the bottom and it can close and open. Uh, however, in the end, I think it was a little bit too fragile. Super Sculpey is very fragile. Uh, even though I, ha I do have a wire armature inside the arms, it's just, it wasn't going to be able to ship. It would be damaged during shipping. So I was trying to figure out how I could produce these and be able to ship it to you. So what I came out came up with was making it a mold of it, and I used a two-part silicone mold. I won't get into the details of how I made the mold uh, because that's just that'll just make this video too long. So, um, but I did make a mold, and then I decided to cast it in a two-part urethane plastic, and I used Smoothcast 300 series, and. So these are the finished results of what the cast turned out to look like. This is really lightweight. It's a hollow bottle. The original sculpt is. But the smooth cast uh, models are very heavy. They're a lot more durable. You can ship them. I've dropped them on carpet and they haven't broken. So they're pretty much exactly what I was wanting. It's a very high quality reproduction. Uh, it is a very long process. I don't just cast it and paint it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the whole process of how I make a bottle from start to finish. And you can try it out yourself, or if you'd like to purchase one from me, I'll list my website. And uh, so here we go. So this is my original mold made from my original sculpture. It was a handmade sculpture made over a glass bottle. And it was too fragile, so I decided to cast it in plastic so it would be more durable. It would make it through the shipping process. So first I made this two-part mold, and then I cast it. Uh, I use uh, Smooth-On Smooth-Cast 300. It's a urethane fast-set resin. You mix it in two equal parts, and then you pour it into the mold. So I'm going to open this mold now so you can see how it looks. And it's made of silicone, so it's really flexible. I try to be really careful with my mold so I don't ruin it. My original sculpture got destroyed during the process of making the mold. So I would have to sculpt a whole new skeleton or use one of these to make a new mold. So there's the front. And there's the back. Here's the mold, and this one is about three years old, so it's, it's pretty worn out on some of the edges, which is the reason for all the little pieces of plastic you see. So normally I'll just pick these off. Uh, you can see how bad that one turned out. Off. It just depends on how tightly I fix them on. So I just pick those off, and then as you can see all around the edge, there is a major line. And I don't want it to have that line. I pick off what I can, but this is really hard, so I can't pick that off. And the only way to get it off and get it smooth is by using a Dremel tool. Well, I use a Dremel tool. I have my Dremel, and this is the uh, bit that I use. It's just a flat one. It has jagged edges, and that basically carves off all the lines. And this process can take me at least 30 minutes per sculpture, and it's extremely messy. The plastic gets everywhere. I have to wear uh, clothing that can get dirty, and then I have to 
do this outside because the dust goes everywhere and I wear a respirator uh, and goggles because it gets in your eyes and it's just not good. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll get back and show you how it looks afterward. using my Dremel tool to remove all the extra plastic from the casting process. Uh, then I normally uh, use an X-Acto knife and I'll go back and look for any places that my Dremel tool couldn't reach, which is sometimes like in the crevices uh, between like bones and, and just try to carve it out a little bit better. Um, I just want to make it as perfect as I can. So I'll take some time and go back in and just use the exacto knife to carve it out and maybe smooth out some areas and then I'll come back in with some sandpaper and smooth some rigid areas a little bit. Um, and you know there's a, like a line here I'll try to sand that out. And then sometimes there'll be some air bubbles from the casting process. And I just use some uh, different types of air dry clay. This is just one that I had that I bought at the craft store. Uh, paper clay will work. And I just fill in any tiny little air bubbles that I might see just to make it as perfect as possible. And then a lot of times with this particular mold, this little finger uh, won't cast. So I can use a epoxy sculpt. It's a two part. Uh, and then you mix them together and then I can sculpt a new finger um, Usually for I need that both for both hands. I'm not sure why I guess the air bubble gets stuck in there and that that part just doesn't cast so uh, Here's an example of something the Dremel tool couldn't reach. There's like a little air bubble in here So I'll just go back in and this can be messy too so anyways, I'll work on that a while and get it ready. And then the next step will be uh, the bottom of the cast. It doesn't look straight. And that can make, uh, you know, it doesn't look nice. And it can make the bottle not sit squarely on the ground. So I'll go in uh, with my miter saw and cut it completely straight and flush to the ground. The next step would be to coat your sculpture in primer. And this is the primer I use. Uh, I spray it on. I try to get two coats at least on each side. Uh, this will help the paint to adhere to the plastic, the urethane plastic. Otherwise the paint wouldn't stick properly or it would chip off more easily. So these have already had their two coats and they are dry and they're ready for painting. So the next step will be painting the sculptures. Uh, I've already prepared the bottom of these. Uh, a lot of times I'll cut them off with a miter saw and then I sand, I'll sand them on the belt sander so just to make sure that the sculpture stands up square when you place it on the table. Um, so I use an acrylic paint. This is usually the brand I like. I, I like the way it has a matte finish. I think it's pretty high, high quality. Um, and this is an antique white for the skeleton bottle that I use. Uh, so I try to get two coats just to make sure it's fully covered and he has a lot of detail so I just use a just a brush and I'll just go in there and brush all inside all the crevices this is the bottom coat
So normally I won't paint around this part so that I can pick him up from here because I'm also going to paint that gold like right around the rim of the neck. And I also paint the very bottom last so I can pick it up with that as well. And I gotta get up underneath the arms and in between all the bones. And in between all the fingers. So you can see the last finger here that I sculpted. I uh, remember I was saying earlier that there was an air pocket and that finger didn't make it out of the mold so I sculpted it by hand. And then on the other side, that's the other sculpted finger. And I used an air dry clay and I also had to glue it on. I want to make sure that the air dry clay sticks properly to the plastic because it's really hard to get anything to stick to plastic which is why I use the primer before I paint. So anyways, I'll just go on and paint the whole sculpture and then I let it dry and then I can do a second coat just to make sure that it is painted really well. So when I say they're hand painted, everything I make is hand painted. So now that the paint has dried, um, I'm going to do the next step of the paint. So I have the antique white acrylic on here. And now I'm going to add a brown. And this, I just use real brown. Uh, and this is the, I use this folk art brand. So I've taken the paint, put it on some paper, and added a lot of water to it. So it's kind of soupy. Um, and so I'm going to do like an antique finish. So I can start with the face and I just paint over it. Make sure I get in all the crevices. And I'll completely cover the whole skull first. And I, I feel like I need to work pretty quickly before it begins to dry because acrylic paint, you know, it tends to dry pretty quickly. Okay. So then I get just a paper towel and I'll start to wipe it off. And that's how I get the nice antique look. I just do little sections at a time, that way it doesn't start to dry out.
So I go along the whole bottle and I use this process to antique it and give it this nice old look. Uh, this takes a while so I'm going to go ahead and finish that and I'll come back. Okay, now that the paint is finished on all the bottles, I'm going to put the words on them. And so these two have already finished. Um, everything is free-handed and this is the type of marker I like to use. So this is what I'm getting started on. And this actually takes a long time. If I get my pen to work. I like this particular pen because uh, the ink looks black. If you were to use a permanent marker, uh, the ink looks kind of purple or blue. So each one turns out different because they're all hand drawn. I try to make them as similar as possible and as perfect as possible, but you know, nobody's perfect. I can just do the best I can on each one. Okay, I don't want to make the video too long, but that gives you an idea of how I draw them. And so this is a finished bottle. And so I'm going to finish that one up. So the painting process is all finished. And each bottle has the words written on them. And the very last thing I do is I have a metallic gold liquid leaf and I'm going to use this to paint around the, the center part of the neck.
so you really don't need that much paint. And just I carefully and evenly paint the gold leaf on. And you don't want it to be enough that it will drip. Just like a small, thin layer. Let's say I got a little too much right there. I'm going to go back and kind of scoop it up a little. If you do get too much, you can just spread it out. So I do that to each bottle, and that gives them the nice gold ring around the neck. So I'll finish those up. And this will be the last hand painting I do. Um, the final touch to keep the paint from ever getting damaged is I'll put a clear coat over them, and I'll show you that next. So this is the last step in the painting process. I have the bottles all ready, and I'm using a clear mat. Rustoleum brand, uh, and this is basically uh, it, it bonds the plastic, so that's why I use this one. I also like the matte because it, the bottle doesn't appear shiny. Uh, so basically, this is coating the the whole bottle, protecting the paint. It's coating it with a clear plastic. So just, I usually give it two light coats, and I go around the entire bottle on each side, and then I'll let it dry, and then I'll do the second coat. And this is just to make sure that paint doesn't scratch and it stays in good shape for as long as possible. So now that the painting is complete and I have the clear protective coat on each bottle, the final touches would be the tag. And so I have just some regular manila tags and then I have painted around the edges to age them and I do this all by hand as well. And and then I take my marker and then I also draw on the tag. And on the back I put my website and my name and uh, sign it. And that's just to show the artists that did it. Okay, so then the last thing is, the last finishing touch is the bottom shows the plastic. And I wanted to give it a finished look. Uh, so I decided to put felt on the bottom. So I've taken a bit of felt and I trace the bottom and I cut it out and then I'll glue this in place and this not only gives it a finishing touch but it also uh, will prevent it from scratching the surface and um, have a nice base to sit on so I'll just finish gluing that and then I'll attach the tag so I normally attach my tags to the bottle arm and this tag is complete So now the bottles are complete. Each one has a custom made tag and they're lined with felt on the bottom. And now they're ready to ship. So I hope you'll give, give it a try on your own to make a bottle. And if you do, uh, I'd like to see how it turns out. So just leave a comment with your photo and let me know how it goes. And then if you'd like to purchase one from me, uh, my store is on Etsy and it's called Netherworld Oddities. And I'll also put a link in the comments. Well, thanks, and I hope you enjoyed the video.